Robert Gruler here. I'm a criminal defense attorney here in Scottsdale, Arizona. Last night on our show, Watching the Watchers, we covered the Kyle Rittenhouse case. We spent a lot of time on that, really dissecting the Wisconsin statutes to determine whether or not this charge of intentional first degree murder is going to stick or whether Kyle is going to be able to use the self-defense doctrine or whether he's going to be able to rely on any of sort of the exceptions, the exclusions that the law provides for in the state of Wisconsin. What we're going to do today, since a lot has happened in the last 24 hours, there's been a lot of new developments, a lot of new videos, some great reporting from a lot of different people, or not really reporting, but sort of analysis has been done. So we have new video I want to show you. And what we want to run through today is going to be sort of what looks like this. So you can see here on my screen that we have the video, but I also have the audio spliced underneath it. So we're going to be able to run through this and really kind of see where the shots are happening because we're going to be able to see the spike in the audio. So a lot of the other analysis that I have seen has not done this. You can hear the shots, but they are fired in rapid succession and you can't really tell where they're coming from because the video is so grainy. So what I want to do is actually spend some time and talk about where those spikes are in the audio to see if we can see something that correlates to that sound to the gunshots in the video and we can just go frame by frame and see whether this new evidence or whether this new video footage supports a lot of what we talked about yesterday that the self-defense theory looks like it is more relevant uh, a quick recap on the show yesterday we were first talking about whether this was kind of one commingled incident or whether there were two sort of separate things that happened because at the time we really only had the two videos one that was in the parking lot and then one when Kyle starts running down the street and then the second uh, sort of grouping of shoot of shots takes place at that time and so what I have done is it took me longer than it should have to find exactly where this took place but it happened of course in Kenosha Wisconsin and this is what it looks like so let me get rid of that but this this is the map of the intersection. You can see it took place right here at 63rd Street and Sheridan Road. And if we zoom in, you're going to see this is the parking lot that we saw in that original video. So the original video, if we back up here, now this is going to be an, an audio warning because the audio is going to be quite loud. But this is the parking lot. You can see here the auto service uh, portion of this building is, is located here. And when we go back over to the map, we're going to then see that it, it, it really is this. We're going to throw our little man here and hop down over onto Street View. And you're going to see that this is the same area. So this is where Kyle was. This is where he was sort of being chased down from this area. So we saw him turn the corner right around here and then loop back around. And the shots took place in this area. So when we go into the video, we're going to see somebody was sort of kind of there were cars parked in this parking lot area right here. And there was somebody sort of filming from this angle. When we back out, we're also going to see that there was somebody on the other side of the street. So somebody, I think over in this area who is going to be recording, uh, just from a different angle. So you've got somebody looking from the, the right side, which is going to be the east side. And you've got somebody who's sort of on the north side of the parking lot who's looking southbound into that. And that matches, like I said, just what we saw. So if we're on street view, we're going to see that all of this took place right here at that intersection. There's a lot of activity going on there. So that was the first grouping. So then the question became, well, all right, well, how much time elapsed between that grouping? The reason why this is important is because if the, the first original threat ended and he, he moved on to a different sort of area, this was a different situation when he fired that second grouping of shots, you could legally say that there, there were sort of separate incidents. But looking at it, I, I don't think that's the case. Here's why. When we go back to the map, the second video that we're going to see is really, really close by. So he takes, if you remember from the first video that we talked about, he's doing a loop sort of in this area. And we're going to go through the video again here shortly. But he's looping around in this area. He comes back over to this spot when he sees that the man was shot. And he's sort of lying on the ground. He's got a bullet, I think, in his head. And he's not in a good situation. He picks up his phone to call for help. And then he starts to see sort of the crowd kind of descending upon him and he takes off going northbound. He's, he's heading northbound in this direction and he runs right up this street. He keeps going for a little bit, 
Kyle's running, running, running. And right about here, just north of this 32 uh, symbol right in the roadway, is where he sort of uh, trips and he fires the additional shots that actually uh, connect with two people killing them. I think it actually hits a third person at that. Uh, one person is shot and, and uh, really hurts his elbow. I mean, he almost you know loses his elbow, his arm on that. And then somebody else is shot and they're killed right there on the scene. And so when we put our little man here and we hop down to street view, we're going to see that we're, this, is, this is all going to look very familiar here in a minute. So you're going to see this is the road that he is running down. So let's go back to the video footage. Let's go back to the second part of the clips. And we're going to see right here, this is the street view portion of it. So we're looking here and you can see the this little uh, lit, looks like a gas station or something down here as Kyle is running down the street. We're going, there he is on the ground. We're going to see this building right here and we're going to see this fence. And when we go back to the map, we're going to see that when we come down here also. So you can see this is the fence, this is the building, right? So if we if we just go up a little bit further down, we turn around, we look at it, this is gonna be the same lit up sign, this is gonna be the same uh, dark windows, the same fence, the same fence here. You can't see any of this stuff in the background because it's too dark, but this this is the area where this all took place. He didn't make it very far. He made it just about two blocks away. He was coming from this uh, a parking lot here with the, the auto zone or the auto uh, repair center at this location. And then he runs up the street and he's basically stopped and tackled right here. So he doesn't even really make it uh, a full, you know, two blocks before the whole situation, uh, you know, gets even worse than it already was. So from my perspective, just, you know, on that analysis, it seems sort of a lot more analogous to, you know, one continuous events, right? This all happened connected. So it's going to be difficult in my mind for the prosecutor to break these things up or to say that they're two separate incidents, right? And that's important for the analysis because if somebody's withdrawing or somebody's fleeing or if he's re-engaging in something, then this could be you know, considered two separate offenses. This could be uh, something where the threat ended and then it began or it, it never existed to begin with. So timing is pretty important. I don't think it's going to be an issue. I don't think that that changes any of the analysis that we talked about yesterday. It's just confirming that this was all kind of one long thing. The first shooting took place. He was Im uh, immediately being chased. He ran up the street and he basically never disengaged from this altercation. So it all happened very, very quickly. And uh, it, it, you know, it looks like he was he was running away from the original the original incident, which of course we saw in the videos. So the the big question that we let were left with yesterday, we analyzed the second part of the shooting, which again we just saw the map, so it's really one big shooting. But I'm still going to call it the second part of this thing. When we were discussing that, it was pretty clear that that seemed to be just you know bona fide self-defense not even something that you could really question because there were other people who were actually swinging and hitting at him and and you know it, it did look like he was under duress it looked like he was under a threat so if that is the situation what we were really concerned about was okay the second part of the case is all dealt with we have pretty good evidence that that's pretty it's pretty clear that it looks like self-defense to us the second part of the equation or which is really the first part is what happened during the first shooting who shot first why was he, he you know he firing his weapon was he being chased by somebody was he provoking somebody what was this interaction that was taking place and because we didn't really have anything to analyze at that point just a grainy video and somebody who got shot in a body on the ground that was kind of an open question but we we, we still you know reached the conclusion based on what we had at the time but fortunately now we have some new evidence so this a lot of this video comes from the New York Times it's it's from somebody else who recorded the video but the new york times actually broke it up and so they circled some key bits and pieces that we're going to dive into they circled where our attention should be which was great but i'm sort of piggybacking and adding on top of that so i downloaded the videos made some recordings of the videos and then put them into uh, some software that we use for video production here called uh, adobe premiere and what you see here this is the actual video footage and this is the audio profile that matches the video. So as we scrub through this, as we roll around it within this, we're going to see that we can hear 
a lot of what is is exactly what we're seeing. And if you look on this little box down here at the bottom right, which is where my uh, current face is, so let me go ahead and move that. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna be able to see that this is something where you can actually see the audio spikes. So let me move that out of the way, and we're gonna see these spikes as we start scrubbing through this. So when you zoom in, you're gonna hear that these big spikes are these pops. So as we scrub to the left, and the audio is gonna be loud, you just you have to have to deal with it. We're listening to gunshots, but this is the this is the part here where you can see the, the red kind of spike up. So there it is. Those are gunshots. So let's listen to it quickly first and watch what the New York Times is doing to show us their, where we, sh we should be focusing our attention. So very briefly, you're going to see, boom, see the handgun muzzle flash. So what they do, and then you hear the audio. So what they're doing is when we back up, they're going to sh to show you where it is now watch this spike down here let's let's zoom in so we can see these spikes very clearly and you're going to see that the, the the sound of the gunshot starts right here you can see that spike okay so this the gunshot is tied to the to the to, to this right here it starts here they pause the sound so that they can put this animation in and then the gunshot picks right up so to me that looks absolutely like a gunshot. Now we didn't see that or hear that because uh, you know, the video was so fast and we just didn't catch it at the time. But this looks like it was a gunshot. Now this is not Kyle. Kyle is over here. Kyle is right here and somebody behind him is actually firing a gun up in the air. So boom, you pause it. Now listen to the gunshot. There it is. So you can see right as that pop happens, the hand is kind of coming down. Okay, the pop is happening right there, boom. And that is the muzzle flash. So that certainly looks like a, like a gun to me. I mean, there's somebody is firing first based on this clip. Now we don't know what, you know, what happened before this clip over in this area, you know, where this picks up. This is, this is where it picks up. We don't know if there were, you know, other shots being fired prematurely, but this is Kyle. And as the video goes through, they're gonna show you the muzzle flash. You're gonna hear the pop, there it is. There's going to be a, that man who's chasing Rittenhouse, who's, who's ultimately shot and killed. He's chasing Rittenhouse, who's going this direction. And let's hear for, listen for the other gunshots. So they're pausing to show you Rittenhouse again. Now get prepared because these are going to be the gunshots. We're going to three, see three successive gunshots back to back. Watch. Okay, so you saw that. You saw these spikes. You heard them. Those are the gunshots. So when we are now focused on the gunshots, the theory is we want to see, are there, is there any indication that those spikes over here, those gunshots, are those coming from Rittenhouse? Where are those coming from? People are running away. Are we seeing any other muzzle flashes from him or his direction? We're, we're just not. I'm not seeing anything in this general area. So, pop, pop, pop. So it's, it's, it's actually hard to see where that comes from. Then we're going to see some more pops. And let's see if we can pinpoint where this stuff is coming from. And we really just can't. Okay, now he's over here at that point in time. So presumably those shots were... Yeah, so something's happening back here. That man is obviously down now. So some of those shots were written houses. It's hard. It's hard to really to determine whether it's all sort of six of them or whether it's this first batch or the second batch. I think it is all six of those. I think those were all coming from his his firearm. But the video just doesn't show us much. We're sort of just presuming that that's happening. You know what we're hoping for is for something to match this first example, right? Where we can see a flash and we can match the flash to the noise. So we can say, okay, that is coming from somebody else that is firing you know, up into the air. But the Rittenhouse, it, we just don't see the same evidence. Doesn't mean he didn't shoot. It you know, doesn't mean that those are not his, uh, his, his bullets being fired. Just so see it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Okay, so we got seven shots there. You can see them, they match the spikes. 
and we just can't we just can't see. Now we know that he shot uh, the I think is Rosenbaum is his name, and he you know he was shot and killed. And the rest of the video will uh, you know follow up. It kind of zooms in, and it's it's uh, it's not good. Obviously, anytime you're watching something like that, it's it's gruesome. It's terrible for the person. It's terrible for their family. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. Now, we don't see any other gunshots. We don't hear them throughout the rest of this. So they're going to show that Rittenhouse comes back around and then he runs, he, he runs off. Now, this is where he's running. So if you remember, this is in the parking lot where, uh, what did I do with the map? There it is. So this is in the parking lot down here. And so at this point in time, Rittenhouse is really standing in this direction right here. This is when he takes off going northbound. And, uh, and then he gets sort of intercepted by the other people. Now this is, he takes off going, he runs off, great. And we're gonna clip out of that. This next video is the same thing, but it's from a different angle. So remember now, so let's take a look here. So this is the auto shop. And that means this other person who's recording this video is essentially right here. So if that other person who fired the gun was right here, we should see it somewhere in this second video, you would imagine. And we actually do, in fact. So as this video goes through, we're going to see some white boys. So they're going to pause. They're going to show us Rittenhouse. We're going to see the man. Yeah, that's Antifa, man. Now, this is something that's been very interesting, too. He throws a bag. Now, I've seen a lot of stuff on Twitter saying that, uh, you know, he didn't have a weapon. He was just throwing a bag. This you know, was just an empty plastic bag. There was nothing in there. There was a lot of speculation that he was throwing a Molotov cocktail. There was a lot of thoughts that this was, uh, you know, a, an actual weapon of some sort, just because people saw the, the, the action of somebody throwing something. They thought it was a Molotov cocktail. Well, it turns out there's other photos. Uh, I've clipped a lot of them that show that uh, this was actually just a plastic bag. But if you watch this, it looks to me like there is a there is a brick or something heavy in this bag because you can't throw a plastic bag like that, right? You can't. I mean, a plastic bag is is it's very light. It's just like throwing a piece of paper. You know, it just kind of will, will putter down to the ground. That's not what happens here. So this does look like to me like a weapon. So now we've got two people who are are basically discharging weapons right around Kyle as he is running away. If that's not self-defense, I don't know what is. So the, the, the response to that argument is that he, you know, he provoked them. He shouldn't have been there. He was underage with an illegal firearm. Uh, he was breaking the law. He was past curfew, all of that stuff. Everybody else was also doing that. There were many other people there who were, you know, who had firearms There were many other people who were uh, there out past curfew so, you know, you, you got to make a judgment call on that, right? The cops were not enforcing any of those laws. Yes, technically they're illegal, but, you know, is that going to carry weight in this case? I think that the prosecutor is absolutely going to lean on that. They have to lean on that. As we went through the statutes yesterday, we spent a lot of time talking about those statutes, that if somebody is in, already in illegal violation of the law, they can't break the law and then claim self-defense. They can't enter, uh, you know, they can't provoke somebody to hurt them, and then when they get hurt, claim you know, or, or respond to them being hurt with deadly force or with lethal force or with physical force because they can't you know, start the fight and then respond to it and claim that they were just defending themselves. The law doesn't want to reward that. So as we're talking about this situation, we see that this gentleman is going to be throwing this, this uh, object here and watch it as it hits the ground. Tell me if it's a plastic bag. Uh, we got a good little hard to see, but it, it does land and kind of slide around. It looks like there's a brick in there. So let's see if we hear any gunshots, and then we'll do a quick frame by frame. Oh, we got a gun, baby. Boom. There's the handgun. The same one that we saw in the other clip, right? This is going to be, so the other view, this guy is standing sort of right here on in the parking lot. He's sort of right in this area, and the other view was coming from this angle, and we could see the gunshot on the left side of the screen, if you remember that. So that is, is the, same, the same handgun. Now, it looks to me, and it sounds to me, like there is, you know, that, like, that there is an actual gunshot. Let's hear it. There it is. So you heard the, the, the first pop right there. Watch the spike in the red. So you see that right there? Boom. That's the gunshot. New York Times is going to pause the video so that they can illustrate it. And then you're going to hear the rest of the gunshot pick up right there. Boom, there it is. So you heard that. 
And that initial shot is the one that we were concerned about. You know, who fired that first shot? So it's it from my angle, from both of these video footage uh, recordings, from the audio that we see, the sound matches the actual gunshot going off into the air. And you can also see that there is, uh, it, you know, it's hard to tell what it is, whether it's fog or whether it's smoke. But you can see sort of right here that, you know, it, it, it's a gunshot, it's a muzzle flash, it's kind of a no-brainer. The, these are going to be the other spikes in the audio. These are the other gunshots that are taking place. All right, so now let's listen and let's look for those. Because on the first video, we couldn't see on this side of, of the vehicle to see what was going on here. Were other people firing at him or not? We couldn't really see. Let's see if we can see anything. All right, so those are the spikes. Those are the gunshots. So as we're scrubbing through, we can see the audio levels go way up on both sides. There's a gunshot that just happened. Are we seeing any muzzle shots or anything like that? The answer is no, I don't see anything. We're still clipping through. More gunshots. Camera's super jerky. So we just can't see anything. Now, Kyle is going to come around the corner here in a minute. Got him. You hear those additional gunshots take place that we saw from the first angle. And then this guy turns off into the woods because there's a gunshot. You know, there's, there's, there's uh, bullets whizzing all around him. So we don't really learn much more from the rest of this clip. But again, the big, the big issue, kind of the big takeaway, is that first shot. It looks like Kyle did not fire it from these two uh, vantage points. Let's take a look at this other clip here. Let's see. All right, the parking lot view. And let's take a look at this clip. Let's go back over here. We saw this clip. This is going to be the second view. Uh, uh, this is going to be the street view of the second shots. So this is when Kyle is running away now. Now, I think that this one is a lot less even debatable, but we can still run through the video and we can take a look at it and see what we can determine. So they're pausing it once again. Watch. He's going to trip. And trip happens. Okay. So we're here. He starts pulling his, his weapon out. He's got a sling on his, uh, on his weapon. So when they try to pull it from him, they're not able to get it. And as these people are coming up, let's watch for the, for the spikes in the audio. Boom. Boom. And boom. Okay, so there's Kyle. Here's another gentleman approaching him with a gun, a handgun now in his, his, his hands. So you've got another situation where he's being chased by at least three people. One of these guys tries to hit him with a skateboard right there. Okay, there's the skateboard. Getting, he's getting kind of cracked over the head with it there. This guy, you know, who knows what he was gonna do. So it's happening very quickly. And let's listen. Let's listen for the gunshots. Boom! So you could see all three of them right there. And one, two, three. And then that clip is going to end, and you're going to see that he got hit with the skateboard, and he got hit with a, or you know, about to get shot, or potentially get shot uh, from the from the actual gun that this this uh, person had here so another review of that video i mean i think it just supports everything we spoke about yesterday it looks like pretty clear self-defense from that angle as well we've got some new information that you know that person had a gun and when we go back to this last video this is a good one that kind of shows both of them being combined so let's see what we can tease out if anything from this final clip hey boys that's antique, man. Throws that bag. Oh, he got a gun, baby. Shot. Oh. They shoot Oh. He shot him. Get back. Okay. Shot him, man. Shot him. Shot him, man. Yeah, so 
Not much more that we're going to see out of that. He basically takes off after that point, and he is is uh, is running away. Now, this is something that you you know there's. Uh, I think this is going to be one of the most interesting legal cases probably of this year. I'm very curious to see what ends up happening with this because there's very good arguments on both both sides. Uh, from what I have gathered. It does sound like the the prosecutor's office is going full force ahead with all of the charges. The the criminal complaint is charging him with first degree intentional homicide for the death of uh, Anthony Huber, first degree intentional homicide for uh, Gage Grosskritz, and then first degree reckless homicide for the death of uh, Joseph Rosenbaum. Also charged two counts of recklessly endangering safety for shooting his AR-15 style rifle in a crowd and being in possession of a dangerous weapon by a person under the age of 18. So he's facing some pretty serious criminal charges. Now, I just don't know what they are going to end up doing with this. You know, the prosecutor's office, it, you know, this is this is one of those cases because of the political nature of what we're looking at. You know, they may they may just want to drive this thing home. You know, they, they're going to say that this kid was... Uh, he shouldn't have been there too young, shouldn't have had a firearm. I understand those arguments, but I don't agree with them, right? We have a lot of 17 year olds who are learned, learned and trained on handling weapons. Uh, we have many of them who are in, you know, ROTC, junior ROTC. They're going to be, you know, after they graduate high school, they're going to be going into formal ROTC. Then they're going to be going into the military. You know, we have people signing up for the military at the age of 18. So this guy is not far from that. And we send them overseas to go, you know, fight wars and to to kill to kill people. That's what they do. So the fact that he's 17, I don't think should disqualify him. Now, if it is something where there's an, you know, according to the Wisconsin law, it does sound like it's illegal for him to even be in possession of this while he, you know, while breaking curfew and all of those other things. Technically, that is you know something that's going to cause problems with the statutes that we talked about. And you know if you if you have not already seen that video, I don't I'm not going to go through the statutes again because I spent about an hour doing it on the last video. So watch that if you haven't already seen it. Now this is a case that I'm very excited to follow along. From what I can tell here, it looks looks pretty clear to me to be self defense. But what is the prosecutor's office going to do with it? They're probably going to prosecute it. They're probably going to take it, uh, you know, fairly far. I am going to guess that they're going to try to plea him out, you know, to negotiate a plea deal. But because he's got so much backing and because of the personality of this kid, uh, you know, he, he may want his day in court. He may have a lot of support around the country, particularly from people who are interested in, you know, gun rights and the Second Amendment and the right to protect yourself, which, by the way, I agree with completely, right? You know, what we're seeing happening around the country is not okay. If they're going to keep asking that we defund the police, there's going to be more of this stuff. There's going to be a lot more of this. And a quick reminder that I am a criminal defense attorney. My day job is to go against the police, but I still see that they have a valid function in society. Defunding the police, having more you know, armed militias of people who maybe are not necessarily best equipped to be protecting their property, but have no choice but to protect their property is something we're going to see a lot more of. And you can't fault anybody for doing that. You can't fault people for protecting their property. Now, the counter to that, of course, is that Kyle wasn't even from that place. You know, he was he traveled across state lines. He was sort of uh, looking for a fight. You know, I understand that argument, but I don't see anything wrong with wanting to help other people protect their property. You know, we have a lot of people who, who, who contribute to causes and they join groups and they join, you know, these, these, these different entities because it, it, it's important to them and it's important to us that we protect our property and we protect our livelihood. So you can't really fault him for, you know, wanting to be a part of that. So that's why this is going to be so interesting because the arguments go both ways. We're going to continue to follow this story based on the evidence that we're seeing today. It looks like self-defense to me. I think he's going to have a pretty strong case, but he's going to be fighting an uphill battle because the prosecutor's office has a lot of uh, a lot of things that they can do just based on the fact that he was carrying a gun that apparently he shouldn't have been carrying. He, you know, he was uh, violating curfew. Those things I think are going to be used as trigger points that are going to justify them trying to get around the self-defense doctrine. They're going to say, yeah, it was self-defense, 
but you broke your you broke the law therefore you can't invoke self defense you were instigating it you were opening the door for this to happen by being there illegally by being in possession of a gun illegally therefore the self defense rules just don't apply and we're going to prosecute you to the fullest extent of the law we're going to see how that works out for them this i do not think that this is a case that is going to go down quietly there are a lot of issues here it's a very interesting case because of just the nature of the facts you know you have a young kid you have a lot going on here you've got multiple shooters you've got you know inst instigation you've got other people with firearms this is like you know not not to make fun of a uh, or not to make light of a difficult situation but this is the type of case that they would give you in law school they would say these facts happened and analyze it. What do you think is going to happen one way or the other? And so those, you know, they, they, they craft those problems to be very difficult to solve because they want to see how much they can tax your brain. This reminds me of a law school problem. You know, this is not the situation like we saw in some, in, in, in a regular criminal case where somebody's getting a DUI and they get pulled over and, and, you know, they get prosecuted. It's pretty, you know, routine more or less. This is something where there are amazing arguments from both sides and it's going to be fun to follow along. Uh, from my perspective, it's not going to be fun for any of these people and I'm not trying to make light of the situation. This is a tragedy, of course. Anybody involved is, is going to have their lives ruined. Uh, Kyle's going to have his life ruined. Uh, the people who were shot and killed, their lives are ruined. Their families' lives are ruined. And you know, this is, is just going to escalate things. We were already at a hot temperature. We were at like a level eight in this country. It's going up. It's going to get warmer. I think we're going to see more of this stuff, unfortunately. And we're still two months out from an election. So this temperature is just going to keep going up and up and up and up and up. And we'll continue to follow the story. So if you're not already a subscriber, subscribe. We'd love to have a conversation with you. We'd love to carry this on. I love it when you're in the comments, uh, you know, telling me how wrong I am because I look at them and then I can make some adjustments. And uh, I actually learn a lot from the comments. There are people who uh, will tell me something and I'll go look that up and then I'll incorporate that back into the next video. So hit the subscribe button. We'll be here. We're going to keep covering this story. We'll follow it along all throughout the entire court proceedings as we're doing with some of the other ones. And we want you to be a part of the journey so hit subscribe leave a comment thumb up the video you know what all of the, the they say on youtube do all of those things we'll love you forever we'll see you on the next uh, episode of this if you don't already know we do a live show on wednesday evenings at 4 p.m it's called watching the watchers live where we are monitoring uh, police prosecutors judges politicians anybody who's involved in the criminal justice system we want to hold them accountable i want to give you the best analysis that i can give you on this channel we look forward to doing much more of it so thank you so much for being here have a great night